Scientists in the United States have made an extraordinary breakthrough in their quest to create life in a laboratory. Using computers, they've created a synthetic cell that grows. Some say it's a scientific watershed comparable to the splitting of the atom, but others are urging caution. It's life with a difference. Scientists in this Maryland lab have developed the world's first synthetic living cell that's able to be replicated over a billion times. The only DNA in the cell is the synthetic DNA uh, that we made. Uh, so it's the first species on our planet uh, to have its uh, parent uh, being a computer. Here's how it was done. The creation of the synthetic cell began on a computer. Using just four bottles of chemicals from the lab shelf, the scientists built the DNA chromosome from scratch. They then inserted it into an empty bacterium. The man-made DNA replaced the natural DNA to become the world's first artificial life form. And when it reproduced, its offspring also had the new synthetic DNA. This is a world-changing moment. I think it's a landmark moment. I think it's going to open up the most extraordinary possibilities for biotechnology and for how we uh, use microbes and other organisms to produce things for us. It's, an, it's, it's the start of a, a third, potentially a third industrial revolution. Scientists say this technology could produce new vaccines or fuels or be used to create biologically based electronic parts. It could also, for example, be used in an oil spill. Synthetic bugs could be created which would clean up the oil quickly. But some are urging caution. This may allow us to make more virulent viruses. This could unleash a bacterium on the world that has properties we didn't expect that could cause great disease. For the first time, humans will be truly playing God. They will be creating life according to their own designs that could not otherwise naturally exist. The one thing both critics and supporters agree on is that this tiny cell will have an enormous impact on our world. Anita Savage, ABC News. Is it a huge new step toward creating artificial life or altering life as we know it? Genome pioneer J. Craig Venter has synthesized an entire bacterial genome. Then he let it take over a cell. Venter says it's the first self-replicating species on the planet whose parent is a computer. We're looking at reaction to the creation from the Center for American Progress, Friends of the Earth, Kotaku, Forbes.com, and the New York Times. First to Jonathan D. Moreno with the Liberal Think Tank Center for American Progress, who explains why this creation is so important. Uh, what the, the Institute has been able to do is take one of these synthetic chromosomes put it into the nucleus of a cell and, and, in a certain sense, reboot the cell to make it follow the instructions of this synthetic chromosome. So you might say that they actually made a synthetic cell. Friends of the Earth, an environmental group, denounced the synthetic genome. Venter has taken genetic engineering to an extreme new level. These new synthetic chromosomes mimic billions of years of evolution. The blogger Kotaku says, we're doomed. In layman's terms, he wants to create life, not just any life, but the sort that we humans can control to our own ends. If that's not the plot of a 70s B-grade horror film, I don't know what is. Venter just spoke to GenBank's 25th anniversary courtesy Video Latte. He admits now that he's taken over one cell, doing it again and again should be a cinch. What took us four years to do in making this first uh, large chromosome, we can now do in a very short period of time. Forbes.com's healthcare blogger says this doesn't mean computer-created life forms are about to take over the earth. Don't panic or get caught in the circle of hype that will be created as these critics clash with gauzy-eyed scientists. There's plenty of time for society to figure out what to do with this new technology. In fact, scientist David Baltimore tells the New York Times he's not sure this is all that big a deal. To my mind, Craig has somewhat overplayed the importance of this. He has not created life, only mimicked it. So what do you think of synthetic cells, unlocking the door to a better life, or Pandora's box? It certainly changed my understanding of life and uh, working on a new definition about how dynamic it is. As things that look static aren't really, they're dynamically metabolizing, producing energy, making new proteins, degrading proteins all based on the genetic code. You take out the genetic code, the cells are dead in a very short period of time. You substitute the genetic code with new genetic code, they make new proteins, and the cell turns in to whatever is uh, dictated by that chromosome. So cells are 
uh, software-driven biological machines. You change the software, you get a different machine built. A lot of evolution has been from uh, minor mutations, uh, copying errors from DNA polymerase, a change in the genetic code. Just one letter being wrong out of a million base pairs, uh, we couldn't get any living cells from it. So the accuracy of the sequence in some genes uh, is absolutely critical. So if an error or a mutation occurs, uh, these cells would just die. At the same time, if they're exposed to UV radiation or, or other mutagens, it could slowly mutate into something else. Uh, but we don't have too many of those in the laboratory where they grow, uh, and certainly not in the freezer where they're sitting now. Understanding life is an important part of what science is about. Uh, if we can understand it, uh, we can try and have more control over it. Uh, we can hopefully uh, cure diseases. Uh, we can try and do something uh, about what we're doing to the environment. We're now uh, addicted uh, to oil on this planet. Uh, we have to end that addiction uh, before we kill the patient. So we need to find substitutes uh, for burning oil. It's the first cell totally controlled by a synthetic chromosome one that we made by starting with the genetic code in the computer, uh, four bottles of chemicals, and building every one of the uh, million the plus DNA base pairs DNA in the right uh, order, the DNA band and, and then finally having this uh, large molecule uh, inserting it in a recipient cell. Uh, that molecule started to be red and transformed that cell into a totally new species. Think of uh, small pieces of DNA like Legos. Uh, we have pieces uh, that overlap uh, with the identical sequence uh, so that we can put small pieces together to make bigger pieces. This project started 15 years ago trying to understand what a minimal life form was. Uh, it was based on trying to understand uh, uh, whether there was life on Mars or what size uh, life forms those could be. Uh, could we understand a, a single a cell even, let alone uh, the whole human genome? But it also means it's a great tool set as we try to solve uh, some of these problems we're all facing. Uh, we have 6.8 billion people here now. Uh, within 30 to 40 years, there's supposed to be 9 billion people. We don't have a means of providing food, clean water, medicine, energy uh, for the 6.8 billion, uh, and we're destroying our planet in the process. How do we do it for 9 billion people? We need new tools of science. It is a powerful technology. It's uh, what has been labeled as a dual-use technology, like most technology is. It could be used for uh, doing harm to others or, or uh, trying to uh, solve the problems of the planet. Uh, so our view is it's sort of a linear increase in what people could do on the problem side, but it's an exponential increase in what we can do on the positive side. Uh, but obviously we have to worry about uh, in this day of uh, constant threats of terrorism, people trying to make something deliberately harmful. Uh, but we have an extremely sophisticated team that did this work uh, and this is not going to be uh, replicable in the near future in the high school science lab.